Hey everybody, Lady Gwendolyn here. I have an unboxing for you. So, I was gifted the Wild Goddess Oracle. Now, I work with Tarot, Oracle, pretty much anything. This is something I'm very excited about. So, I'm going to get this open here. Um, I haven't taken it out of the box yet. I'm just now taking them out. Now, the book that comes with it, let me just show this, real, talk about the book real quick. It is a full-size book that would go in a library. The pictures in it, you know, are of course from the, from the Oracle deck, but it gives very good descriptions. It tells the, the name, the message, and it describes the card. And there is a gentle healing ritual um, or warness, warriorness um, invocation. So there's little things to do. All right, so let's check out these cards. What kind of cards are in the Wild Goddess Oracle? The first card is the shaman. So it says, work on healing and empowering yourself. If you wait, want to be useful to others on their own journey from suffering to healing. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to look in the book and see what it says to do for the shaman. Oh, in, in the beginning of the book, it has pictures of all of the cards to kind of tell you where you're at. There is an introduction. I have not looked at it yet. This is the first time I'm cracking the book. But I love the details. Okay. There are energy exercises. Cards and layouts. Sample questions. Mind, body, and spirit readings. Okay, the first card, the shaman. So with the shaman, the what it tells to do is a root meditation. So basically, get yourself grounded, get yourself where you need to be, and move on. Oh, the dawn card, which is absolutely beautiful. Um... Kind of reminds you of the justice card a little bit with keeping things in balance. What it says, do not be discouraged if things look dark and hopeless. The sun rises each day revealing new possibilities and renewed hope. I'm only going to do this with a couple of them. So for the dawn, there is a spell for new beginnings. So... New beginnings every day, every night, and every way. Bring the new, bring the bright, bring the good, bring the right. Future free and future wide, goddess walking by my side. As above and so below, as my will, now make it so. Oh, I love that. All right. Third card is... So far is my favorite because I do a lot of shadow working and I work it in with my practice. Um, my energy healing. I do have a, you know, a shadow healing thing that involves tarot as well as Reiki and access bars. So the shadow card is literally a woman. The art is very abstract. So... It would appear as though that she is trying to cover herself. So she's definitely hiding her shadow self. She's definitely hiding who she is. Making a friend and ally of your shadow side is necessary for becoming your authentic self. A key element of your true success. And then we have the mermaid. The mermaid is a beautiful car. She's just sitting on a rock holding a seashell. Um, the Sybil, 
is card number five. The Priestess is card number six. The Seeker, which if you if you were thinking or think of a woman coming out of the front of your head, like like uh, Athena bursting from Zeus's head, birthing from his head, like the migraine. That is the kind of visualization I have for that. Mm, the dancer. So the eight number card number eight. The dancer is very fairy like. And number nine, the guardian. So she literally looks like a guardian angel with the wheel of the year behind her. Number ten, the butterfly. Beautiful representation. Um, a woman dresses a butterfly in blues and purples. The Maya. There's a, I think there's a lizard on that with that. Number 12 is the Manifester. The Manifester. The ruler is number 13. And of course, these are all goddesses. The ruler is a goddess. Number 14, the drama queen. So she, I mean, that's what you look like, uh, what I would think Athena. And I can't say anything too bad about Miss Athena because she's standing right behind me. Um, the teacher has um, an owl and a serpent across, an owl in front of her and a serpent across her head. The hopeful. Now, the hopeful, um, with the imagery on card number 16, is very Aleister Crowley um, with, you know, the, the scene from the third eye. The Resolute, number 17. She has made up her mind and she knows what she wants. The Infinite is card number 18. She is one that um, the cycles just flow through. Uh, the Yogini, number 19, sitting on a lotus like Vishu. The Siren. So the Siren card number 20 is included with ships and castles and the sirens singing in the night. Uh, card number 21, the Inventor. So you see um, a castle and a ship in her background too. And that is, she is creating empires. Um, the Peacemaker. She is just sitting in the water playing with the lily pads. Number 23, the lover. The lover. With love, all things are possible, for love replaces your confusing doubts and weakening fears with faith in yourself and others. So I think we really need to take, take point from her right now, is to definitely love yourself. You know, remember, you are worthy of love. Uh, the healer, number 24. She is sitting with the pyramids. It, she has ancient knowledge of, of medicine. The warrioress, fierce African queen. I love it. The empath. And with her, she is sitting there um, with the bird in hand. And it looks like the energy is just flowing all around her. So she is feeling that energy. Um, the poet, uh, card number 27, is definitely Maya Angelo. Maya Angelo. Um, you know who I'm talking about. Vibe. The Protector, number 28. And 
race a word and ready to fight. Kind of a Aries, not a race sword, but Aries, Aries head piece. Um, I do see, I guess it's wild goddess, so I do see um, goddess symbolism in there. Uh, the free spirit, so she has a falcon head on her. Uh, the critic. The critic is an interesting looking card because um, it looks like she's raising, you know, somebody's raising a hand to kind of silence her and um, but she's not letting her voice go quiet. She will be heard. The balancer. So the balancer card is a head with the yin yang on the inside. The Alchemist. The Alchemist card number 32. And the Alchemist is one that is the create creation and working really hard to mix things together. Ah, uh, the witch. And she looks like um, an Alexandrian priestess. She's beautiful. And just because she's the witch, let me read to you what it says. Be aware of your reputation, your influence, and your power to create, preserve, or destroy. Powerful women are often misunderstood. And that's what I said about the Wicked Witch of the West. I think she was just misunderstood, especially if you are readers and you have read Wicked or you know the story of Wicked. Poor woman was just misunderstood. All right, number 34, the Sage. So she, um, she's got the, the scythe, you know, to cut down the herbs and... make mix things together the say she is the wise woman the survivor now this is a, a beautiful native princess um she's got her braids and um the feathers in her hair uh the gardener looks like what you would typically think of a, a cottage core style uh, goddess. The matcha? No. The mask. So, kind of like over in, um, in the Middle East where they wear the burkas and stuff like that. So, the mask is kind of like that. It just covers your face. Due to the current situation, let me read the mask. Neither you nor anyone else involved in your situation has the clear picture of what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, the messenger has um, the wings of Hermes off of her head. So, you know, she's bringing good messages. Um, number 39, the detective. So she is not shy. She is out there. She is trying to get to the root of the situation. Um, the humorist. Um, she looks like she has a hat with a waterfall on her head. And so I don't know what that's going to mean. The number 41, your higher self. So looking looking for yourself never letting yourself stray you will stray but you got to get yourself back in order um number 42 the wounded so she is definitely in a state of of, of healing number 43 the fortune teller now i do see a lot of butterfly imagery in this in this deck and this one her headpiece is a butterfly as well um the grace and she looks like she's out of like the 1930s she's beautiful um number 45 the dreamer the 
and she is laying asleep on her pillow with the moon up high. The visionary. So this this looks like um, this has the woman in a vessel like a like a flower vase, and there is uh, energy flowing out of that into her head. So she is getting her visions from the ancestors. Uh, the angel is a beautiful pink, fully winged angel. Uh, the game changer. Uh, another Middle Eastern beauty right there. Let me. This one would be interesting. How confident you feel about magic and change, especially your ability to magically change yourself and your situation is crucial. Wow. Yeah, I have a lot of powerful vibes from her. Um, the Traveler, number 49. Let travel, education, and communication systems take you and your ideas to the world and or use the same to bring the world to you. Hello, Traveler. Uh, the Truth. This is definitely um, justice energy right there. Now, with the wings and everything um card number 51 the warrior so she is ready to come in and take control of any situation and the last card 52 the escapist so she's there but she's ready to walk away at any time all right now i'm going to clear this off my desk and we're going to do try a little reading now just because I want to do something that is in the book let me pull to mind body and spirit spread okay so with the mind body and spirit spread the first card represents your mind or mental attitude the mind position relates to your experience of communication and can include thoughts and ideas. I'm not normally one that goes for the book, but since it has examples and suggestions, then honey, I am all for it. Okay, so the first card... The Sybil. Second card, the Mermaid. And third card, the Shaman. All right, now let's see what they represent. So, if the first card is your mind and your mental attitude, that is the Sybil. So, what does the Sybil stand for? I guess I don't normally go for the book, but since we're opening up, we're exploring this together. Uh, the Sybil. So, for your mental state, it's basically saying, watch who you're talking to. Think twice before sharing what you know with anyone except those who you know without a question are ready to hear it. So, just because you are on your own spiritual journey does not mean that everybody else is on the same path or even in the same space that you are. They could be headed in the same direction as you, but they may not be ready to hear the advice that you have to give them. Okay, that's card one. Card two is your body, your physical manifestations. Um... So, it speaks for the here and now. So, the mermaid. Look below the surface of your emotional reactions to know what is really going on for things are not always what they seem. So, when it speaks as far as in the here and now, you, you kind of tend to wonder... Are people around me really telling the truth? Or do I feel secure enough in what I'm doing? Or 
Is it, is, are those waves just going to come and knock everything down? And that's kind of where that is right now. And the shaman card, third card, your spirit and how the question affects your heart and soul. So the shaman got really lucky. So these, all these cards are in the front of the book. Work on healing and empowering yourself if you want to be useful to others on their own journey from suffering to healing. And the shaman card speaks to me because this is what I do. I use the tarot cards to help, you know, love and guide people into a direction that they um, want to achieve. I have my own situations that I, I go through, but I use that experience and that growth to be able to help others. So, mind, body, and spirit. What are these three cards saying? Well, these cards saying that be thankful that you are on your own spiritual journey. And keep in mind that not everybody is on the same path. And be careful who you share your path with because not everybody is able to um, be strong enough to handle your your strength, your power, your energy, your drive to move forward. So, with that being said, I have a great love of these cards. These are beautiful. The book is great. I mean, like, I don't have to put it back in its, in its you know, outer shell. I can put it on the, um, in, into the library and it be a standalone book as well as um, a directory for these cards. So I'm really excited about it. The Wild Goddess Oracle. Explore the mysteries of the universe outside and within. So these cards are very good for, for healing your, yourself and your environment around you. So I will be using these cards in the future. You will see them coming soon. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Remember to like and subscribe. And follow me at Lady Gwendolyn on Facebook. Lady Gwendolyn on YouTube. And LadyGwendolynHealing.com for any services. See you soon.